certainly the financial side, uh, buyers are really sophisticated. So as a founder presenting your business for sale, you are not hiding anything. And frankly, like if you're hiring the best investment bankers in the world, they're never going to let you do that. Quality of earnings is uh, becoming even more important in these sales. Buyers want to see it. They want to know the numbers are are true. Because the second you present something that isn't true, they question everything else. Right. And you talked about projections. You're going to be held to that, right? Your out, ultimate outcome is going to be based on some of those projections. So you want to be very realistic. You can be, you can be optimistic like most entrepreneurs are. Um, the one thing that that I think access point brings to an M and A transaction, frankly, is de-risking all of the HR surprises that you could have. We continually are in um, transactions where an employee raises an issue that probably should have been dealt with years before. Um, you're paying people the wrong way, whether they're 1099. Uh, contractors, interns, employees, right? That that's uh, it's complicated, and the buyers want to do HR due diligence, and your company really streamlines that for some of the smaller, smaller businesses. Certainly, our clients, right? We have clients today that use your service. Can you talk a little bit about the benefit of what you're offering today to uh, to business owners that are contemplating uh, an M and A transaction? Certainly, I th- <coughs> excuse me. I think the the biggest value that we bring is peace of mind that there aren't going to be any labor or HR related surprises. If you go into a transaction, um, you know, our, our business model is ideally, you know, best delivered to companies that have some sort of a middle management layer. So like 15 to 25, 20 employees or so, and a little bit larger, but we have all sorts of clients that start out with us with one, two, three employees. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we actually would like to get in with a new client then rather than have, you know, a lot of times to say, well, I'm not ready for you yet. I'd like to wait. Yep. But what ends up happening a lot of times is clients wait. And then, especially when you're in a, you know, a, a growth oriented startup business, mm-hmm. there are so many other things that, you know, are, are drawing your attention. Sure. And, you know, you can use, you know, a, a gusto or a paycheck or something like that. And payroll is no longer a problem, mm-hmm. but it's not really ideal. It's not preparing you to expand to other states. And in this day and age, post-COVID, we have all sorts of clients that have three or four employees, and they're working in three or four different jurisdictions yep. for employees. They've got a West Virginia employee and a California employee and an Austin, Texas employee, and they're based in Michigan or they're based in Illinois. And so, you know, employment rules and regulations, you know, drive necessities for compliance in every single one of those jurisdictions. Yeah. So I, I can tell you without a doubt, a client that has 10 or fewer employees that operates in more than two jurisdictions, mm-hmm. they can't possibly do it on their own for less than we would do. And they can't possibly be as compliant as they need to be by doing it on their own. There's just too many moving pieces. <laughs>